Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we're going to talk about the Excel International AS and A Levels Mechanics One. In this lecture, we'll continue with Chapter Four: Dynamics of a Particle Moving in a Straight Line. So before we were、uh, talking about the force which acts in a straight line, and in this lecture, we'll discuss a force which acts、uh, in two-dimensional space. So think about if we have a two-dimensional space. So we can write all the vectors in terms of this x, y axis, or you can think about this is i, this is j. Okay. So if we have、um, an object here, and we have a force applied to this object, so this is a force. So we can represent this force in a vector format. So if this force, this end point here, has coordinate p q, so this force can be written as p i plus q j. So here i and j represent the directions of the positive x axis and positive y axis. Or we can write the force as the vector format. So we have p here, q here. Okay, so、um, if we have the force written like this, so when we apply Newton's second law, so F equals to mass times acceleration. So here, force is a vector, and the mass is a scalar, just a number, and this acceleration is also a vector. So we can write this acceleration in the vector format as well.、Uh, so, for example, if we have this force equals to p i plus q j, so we have m times this acceleration equals to force p i plus q j, because m is a scalar. So we can divide m on both sides. So this acceleration will be p over m. This is a number, and in i's direction, and plus q over m in j's direction. Or you can write this acceleration as p over m, q over m. Okay, so、uh, let's look at some questions. So the first one is question three, on page sixty-six. So here we have a particle, and its mass is three kilogram, and we have a force F, and we know its acceleration, and we want to find out the force. Okay, so here let's think about the Newton's second law, as we just mentioned, F equals to mass times acceleration. So we know mass is three kilogram, and acceleration is seven i minus three j. So this one equals to twenty one i minus nine j, and its unit should be newton. So this is the vector of the force. So we're done with question A. Question B. So the magnitude and bearing of the force. First, let's talk about the magnitude. So here the force is a vector. So for any vector like a i plus b j, right? So its magnitude should equal to square root of a square plus b square. So here the magnitude should equal to square root of twenty one square plus negative nine square. So this will be, ah,、uh, let's just use calculator here. So twenty one square plus ah、uh, nine square. So five two two. Um, so this will be the magnitude, okay, and the bearing of force. So let's just draw the force vector first. So we have this is x-axis, this is y-axis, right? So here you can think about this is a particle, and the force is twenty-one i minus nine j. So starting from this origin, so the vector should end at a point twenty-one negative nine. So twenty one negative nine is here, right? So this will be the force. Okay. So what is bearing? Bearing is we think about this is a positive y axis direction. So we go from this positive y, we turn always clockwise 
until we reach this fourth vector. So this angle here is the bearing. Okay, so we call this big angle theta. So that's the one we are looking for, right? So if you look at this small angle alpha here, so we know bearing equals to, which is theta, right? 90 degree and plus alpha. So how do we find out this alpha? So if you look at this triangle here, we have tangent alpha equals to this length, which is 9. And this length here is 21. So alpha will be tangent inverse 9 over 21. Okay, so we use calculator again. So tangent inverse, um, give me one second. So tangent inverse, um, tangent inverse 9 over 21. So this angle is 23.2 um, degree. So this should be 113.2 degree. So that's how we do question 3. Okay, let's take a look at question 7, still on page 66. So a particle of mass 4 kilogram starts from rest and is acted upon by a force of 6i plus bj. So R acts on a bearing of 45 degree, and we want to find out the value of b. So we have this x-axis and y-axis, right? The object is on the origin. So this is the object. So the force has a bearing of 45 degrees. So as we just mentioned, so for the bearing here, we go from the positive y-axis direction and we turn, at the, uh, we turn clockwise for 45 degrees, right? So it should be this one here, right? This angle should be 45 degree. Okay, so this is the direction of the force R. And we know R, this ending point's coordinate are 6B. Okay, so how do we find out B? So if we draw a perpendicular line here, so this angle should also be 45 degree. So that means this uh, right angle triangle here, we have this length equals to this one. So B should equal to 6. So that's for question A. Question B, so the magnitude of R, so now we know R equals to 6i plus 6j. As we mentioned, its magnitude should be square root of 6 square plus 6 square. So it will be 6 square root of 2 newton. Okay, work out the magnitude of the acceleration. Let's try to find uh, acceleration first, which is also a vector. So we have R equals to mass times acceleration. So as we mentioned, this mass is a scalar. So we can write A as 1 over M. So we divide M on both sides, R. And here, R is 6i plus 6j, and mass is 4. So A should equal to 3 over 2i plus 3 over 2j. So this is a vector of the acceleration. And now we are looking for the magnitude. So the magnitude of acceleration will be 3 over 2 squared plus 3 over 2 squared. So it will be 3 over 2 times square root of 2. Okay, so that's for C. For D, find the total distance traveled by the particle during the first five seconds of its motion. Okay, so initially the particle is staying here, and then it's moving under this force, right? So we know the acceleration. So here, actually, we know if we look at this um, direction here, so we know this particle is traveling on this straight line. So we can use this magnitude of this acceleration to find out the distance, right? So we have this formula. So um, um, distance equals to initial speed times time plus 1 over 2 acceleration t squared. So the initial speed is 0 plus 1 over 2. So here actually we use the uh, uh, magnitude of this acceleration. So 3 square root of 2 over 2. And t is 5, so it will be 25. So this value will be 75 square root of 2 over 4 meter. Okay, so that's how we do this question 7. 
Now let's take a look at question eight. So we have three forces. Um, they all act on a particle, and the first force is F1, F2, and F3. And this particle is in equilibrium. We want to find out this value P and this value Q. Okay, so because it's in equilibrium, so that means the resultant force is zero. So the resultant force, how do we find it out? We just add those vectors, right? So F1 is negative 3i plus 7j. F2 is i minus j. And F3 is pi plus qj. So we add vectors. We add all the i components. So we'll be negative 2 plus pi. And here we have 6 plus qj. So this one is 0. That implies negative 2 plus p should equal to 0, and 6 plus q should equal to 0. So we have p equals to 2, and q equals to negative 6. Okay, so that's for a, for b. So force M, F2 is removed. So given that in the first 10 seconds, its motion, the, uh, of its motion, the particle travel a distance of 12 meter, find out the mass of this particle. Okay, so here we know the force, right? And also we know the distance. So we know the force, we know the distance travels, and we want to find out the mass. So how do we link force with mass? So we use Newton's second law. Force equals to mass times acceleration. So we know the force right now, right? So in order to find out the mass, we need to find out its acceleration. And we can use the distance and also the time to find out this acceleration. So uh, as we just use this formula, so the distance equals to the initial speed times time plus 1 over 2a times t squared. So here, just be careful, because when we use this formula here, this a is just a number. So we can think about this is the magnitude of this acceleration. OK, so d equals to 12. And initially, this particle was in rest, so this should be 0. And plus 1 over 2 times the magnitude of A. And T here is 10, so 10 squared. So we have the magnitude of this one should be 24 over 100, 0.24 meter per second squared. OK, so we also know the force, right? So what will be the force? So the force here, uh, give me one second. So F2 is removed. So this force is a resultant force of F1 and F3. So force equals to F1 plus F3, which is negative 3i plus 7j. And we know P, which is 2, and Q is negative 6. OK, so this one should be negative i plus j. OK, so we have this F equals to ma. So the acceleration should equal to F over M, right? We can divide a number. So here will be negative I plus J over M. OK, so we can write as this format as well, plus J over M, right? OK, so the magnitude of this A should be negative 1 over M squared plus 1 over M squared. So it should be M. And then here, square root of 2. OK, and we know this is 0 0.24. So m will be square root of 2, 0 0.24. OK, so we can uh, simplify this a bit. So we have 2, 4, 100 square root of 2. We divide 4. So here should be 6. And this one will be 25 square root of 2 and unit kilogram. OK, so that's for question 8. Now let's take a look at question 10. So we have two forces. So this time we write in this format, 2, 5, P, Q. They act on this particle P, and P's mass is M kilogram. So the resultant of these two forces is R. OK, so given that R acts in a direction which is parallel to 1, negative 2, we want to show this equation holds. OK, so R is a resultant force. So that should be the sum of these two force vectors, right? So it will be 2 plus P, 5 plus Q. 
because r is parallel to this one, negative 2. So that means we can find a constant k such that 2 plus p, 5 plus q equals to k times 1, negative 2, so which is k, negative 2k. Okay, so we have 2 plus p equals to k. 5 plus q equals to negative 2k. So equation 1, equation 2. So we can plug in equation 1 into 2. So it will be negative 2, 2 plus p, right? Because this is just k. Okay, so we have 5 plus q equals to negative 4 minus 2p. So that means 2p plus q plus 9 equals to 0. So we've done question A. Question B. So we know p equals to 1. And P moves with the acceleration of this magnitude. And we want to find out the value of M. Okay, so here we know P equals to 1. So we use this equation here. So Q equals to negative 9 minus 2, which is negative 11. Okay, so we can find out the resultant force right now, right? So it will be 2 plus P, 5 plus Q, so which is 3, negative 6. Okay, so the resultant force equals to mass times acceleration. So mass is a um, uh, scalar, so the acceleration should equal to 1 over m times 3, negative 6. Right, so we can write as 3 over m, negative 6 over m. Okay, and also we know this acceleration's magnitude, so we'll have the magnitude equals to square root of 3 over m square plus negative 6 over m square, right? So it will be m square root of, so this is 9 plus 36, 45. And it equals to 15 square root of 5. So m should be square root of 45 over 15 square root of 5. So this cancel here, square root of 9. So will be 3 over 15, which is 1 over m kilogram. I'm oh, sorry, 1 over 5 kilogram. Okay, so that's how we do this question 10. Now let's take a look at the challenge question in this section. So here we have a particle, and we know its mass is 0 0.5 kilogram. And there are two forces, F1 and F2, and K is a positive constant. So given that the particle is accelerating at a rate of this, so that's the magnitude of the acceleration. Okay, so we know mass is 0 0.5, and also the acceleration's magnitude is 8 square root of 17. Okay, so the resultant force is the sum of these two forces, um, so it will be negative 4i plus ki plus 2kj, right? So we put k, uh, sorry, we put i um, together and put j together. Okay, so this one, according to Newton's second law, equals to mass times acceleration, 0.5a. So we have acceleration equals to 2k minus 8i plus 4kj. So its magnitude will be square root of 2k minus 8 square plus 4k square. So it will be 8 square root of 17. Okay, so how do we find out this case? So we just need to solve this equation, right? So we, uh, maybe we simplify a little bit. For this one, we take out 2. So we have 2 square root of k minus 4 square. And here is 2k square. So equals to 8, square root of 7. So we divide this 2, so here should be 4. Now we do the square. k minus 4 square plus 2k together square equals to 16 times 17. So 4 plus 1, 5k square minus 8k plus minus 16 times 16 equals to 0. Okay, so k should equal to, so we only take the positive one, right? So 10, 8 plus 8 square plus... 4 times 5 times 16 times 16. Okay, so um, let's try to simplify this. 8 plus, so here we can take out 8. So it will be 1 plus um, 20 times 
four, eighty-one. So will be nine. So ten times eight over ten, which is eight. Okay, so that's how we do this question、um, of this section. So that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it, and wish you good luck with the exam.